Birds are truly amazing when you think about it. These guys are direct descendants from dinosaurs after all, and they live in the sky, which is truly awesome. Can you imagine what it would be like to be able to fly? Normally size isn't an advantage when it comes to flight, but some birds had other ideas. From the giant of South America to the bird with a crazy huge beak, here's the 20 biggest birds in the world. <sighs> Number 20, the Andean condor. This solitary species of the genus Vulture is the enormous Andean condor, a vulture native to South America. The Andean condor, which may be found in the Andes highlands and the Pacific beaches of the western South America, is the biggest flying bird in the world when weight and wingspan are combined. It weighs 15 kilograms and has a maximum wingspan of 3.3 meters. It's typically regarded as the world's biggest bird of prey. It's a huge black vulture with enormous white patches on its wings, especially on the male, and a rough on the white feathers of the base of its neck. Nearly completely devoid of feathers and a dull red tint, the head and neck may flush and so change color in reaction to the bird's emotional condition. Yep, these birds blush like you and me. The male has a huge dark red comb, or a carnicle, on the crown of its head, and a wattle on the neck. The condor is an exception to the rule among birds of prey, in that the female is smaller than the male. The condor eats carrion largely as a scavenger. Large carcasses like those of deer or cattle are preferred by it. It matures sexually around the age of 5 or 6 and builds its nests up to 5,000 meters above sea level, usually on difficult rock ledges. Typically one or two eggs are laid. With a lifetime of over 70 years in certain situations, it's one of the longest living birds in the world. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Dalmatian Pelican Although the greatest swans are larger in terms of weight and length, the Dalmatian pelican is the largest member of the pelican family and possibly the largest freshwater bird in the world. Their groups fly in beautiful synchronicity, and they're graceful flying birds with wingspans that match those of the huge albatross. It's a short to medium distance migratory bird between breeding and its overwintering sites, with a range stretching through much of central Eurasia, through the Mediterranean in the west to the Taiwan Strait in the east, and from the Persian Gulf in the south to Siberia in the north. There are no known subspecies within its extensive range, but a place to see paleo subspecies, PC paleocrispus, has been defined from fossils found in Binagadi, Azerbaijan, based on size variations. Like other pelicans, its food consists primarily of fish, and the males are bigger than the females. They may be identified by their silvery white plumage, silvery legs, and curled nape feathers. When flying, the wings seem solid gray, but in the winter when they have duller plumage, adults might be mistaken for great white pelicans. The mating season is when their abrasive vocalizations are most noticeable. The species population drastically decreased over the 20th century, in part as a result of land usage, human disturbance, and poaching. The majority of the population still exists in Russia, while the rest of its range in Mongolia is in grave danger. Local decreases have been reversed by removing power lines to prevent crashes or electrocution, and building nesting platforms or rafts. Number 18. Cory Bustard the biggest flying African native bird is the Cory Buster. It's a member of the Bustard family, which is only found in the Old World and is part of the order Otidiformes. It belongs to one of the four species of the large body genus Artiotis, which have ranges from Africa to India to Australia. In actuality, the male Cory Buzzard could be the heaviest flying creature alive. Like the majority of bustard species, this one is a ground-dwelling, opportunistic omnivore. Male quarry bustards, which may weigh more than twice as much as females, try to mate with as many females as they can before abandoning their offspring's care. The nest is a small depression in the ground that's frequently covered by neighboring obstructions like trees. Number 17. Domestic Turkey 
one of the two species of the genus Miliagris, the domestic turkey is a huge bird. It's actually the same species as the wild turkey. Recent study reveals a potential second domestication event in the region that's now the southwestern United States, between 200 BC and AD 500. Even though it was previously believed that the domestication of turkeys took place in central Mesoamerica at least 2,000 years ago. The majority of domestic turkey types, however, may be traced back to a bird grown in central Mexico and brought to Europe by the Spanish in the 16th century. <laughs> Domestic turkeys are a common breed of fowl that are farmed all across the world's temperate regions, in part because industrialized farming has made them quite affordable, considering how much meat they produce. The young domestic turkeys are known as poults, or turkeylings, while the females are known as hens. Male turkeys are referred to as toms in Canada and the United States, and stags in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Although brown or bronze feathered variants are also cultivated, the vast majority of domestic turkeys are bred to have white feathers because their pin feathers are less noticeable when the corpse is prepared. The snood, a fleshy protuberance on the beak, and the wattle, a protuberance linked to the bottom of the beak, are two different structures. Number 16. Greater Rhea. Eastern South America is home to the greater rhea, a type of flightless bird. The greater rhea is also known as the gray, common, or American rhea. The larger rhea, one of only two species in the genus Rhea and family Rheidae, is indigenous to Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. It may be found in a range of open spaces, including grasslands, savannas, and grassy wetlands. The ray is the biggest bird in South America and the largest native existing bird in the whole of the Americas, weighing about 20 to 27 kilograms. In the wild, they have about a 10 and a half year life expectancy. Additional noteworthy traits are its reproductive patterns and the recent establishment of a population in Northern Germany. The IUCN rates the species as near threatened. Greater Rhea were hunted by prehistoric people in the Pantagonia region and stencils of their talons from the early Holocene can be seen at rock art sites like Cueva de los Manos. Similar to how emus and ostriches are raised, this species is farmed throughout North America and Europe. Number 15. Emperor Penguin. The emperor penguin, which is unique to Antarctica, is the tallest and heaviest of all extant penguin species. The male and female are comparable in size and plumage, reaching a length of 100 centimeters and weighing between 22 and 45 kilograms. The white belly, pale yellow breast, and bright yellow ear patches stand out clearly against the black head and black feathers. It has a sleek body, stiffened and flattened wings that have evolved into flippers for a marine life, and it's flightless like other penguins. In addition to fish, krill, and other crustaceans and cephalopods like squid are also part of its diet. This species can dive to a depth of 535 meters for around 20 minutes when engaged in hunting. This is made possible by a number of adaptations, including the capacity to lower metabolism and turn down non-essential organ activities, strong bones that prevent barotrauma, and a uniquely structured hemoglobin that allows it to operate at low oxygen levels. Emperor penguins travel 50 to 120 kilometers over the ice to mating colonies, which can have up to several thousand individuals. They're the only penguin species that breed throughout the Antarctic winter. The female lays a single egg, which the male incubates for slightly over two months, while the female goes out to water to eat. The parents then alternate going out to sea to forage and taking care of their young in the colony. In the wild, their life expectancy is normally about 20 years, although some individuals may live to be 50 according to observations. Number 14, Whooper Swan. The whooper swan resembles Bewick swan in appearance. With a length of 140 to 165 centimeters, it is, however, even bigger. Whooper swans need wide amounts of water to live in because their body weight cannot be sustained by their legs for long periods of time while they're still growing. The whooper swan spends a lot of time swimming, fishing, or eating plants. Whooper swans are large birds with strong wings that produce a booming honking cry. In order to reach their wintering grounds in southern Europe and eastern Asia, whooper swans might travel hundreds or even thousands of kilometers. They reproduce in subarctic Euro-Siberia in the Taiga zone farther south than Bewick's. Fewer than five pairs have mated there recently. They're uncommon breeders in northern Scotland, especially in Ornkey. A few pairs have also bred there recently in Ireland. This bird occasionally strays into western North America and the Indian subcontinent. Swans from Iceland spend the winter in the UK and Ireland, particularly in the wild fowl and 
and Wetlands Trust of Royal Society for the protection of birds' nature reserves for wildfowl. They make loud, strident sounds that sound familiar to Bewick swan calls, but are, on average, lower pitched and more resonant. Number 13. Shoebill. An extremely huge stork-like bird, the shoebill is also known as the whalehead, whale-headed stork, or shoebill stork. Its large shoe-shaped bill is where its name comes from. Its general shape is fairly stork-like, and because of this it was originally included with the storks in the order Ciconiforms. However, genetic data replaced it in the Pelicaniforms order, among herons and pelicans. The juveniles are more brown than the adults, which are mostly gray. It inhabits expansive marshes in tropical East Africa, from South Sudan to Zambia. Birdwatchers rank this species among the top five most attractive birds in Africa. With people, they're submissive and exhibit no threatening traits. Within two meters, researchers were able to get a close-up view of a bird in its nest. The shoebill is also famous among gamers, as it serves as the inspiration for the loftwing birds in The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Zoos frequently house shoebills, although breeding is seldom documented. The first zoo in the entire world to breed a shoebill is Pairi Daiza in Belgium. Between 5,000 and 8,000 are thought to be in existence, the bulk of which reside in the wetlands in South Sudan, Uganda, and the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Zambia. Number 12. Great Bustard The lone bird in the bustard family and the sole representative of the genus Otis is the Great Bustard. From northern Morocco, south and central Europe, through temperate central and east Asia, it breeds in open grasslands and cropland. Asian communities travel further south in the winter, although European populations are mostly year-round residents. Since 1996, it's been classified as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. Approximately 60% of the world's population is currently concentrated in Portugal and Spain. When the final bird was shot in 1832 in Great Britain, the species went extinct. Back in those days, people used to celebrate wiping out a whole species like it was some kind of insane video game. The past is weird, but we see things differently now. <laughs> It's been successfully reintroduced into England recently, and Salisbury Plain, a training ground for the British Army, is home to a colony of 40 birds. Here, because there's no public access, they have the freedom they require to nest on the ground. The average lifespan of a great bustard is around 10 years, however some have been known to survive up to or even over 15 years. The species' longest living known member was 28 years old. Due mostly to violent intraspecies combat with other males during mating season, adult males appear to have a greater death rate than females. This may be responsible for the large number of guys that die within the first few years of adulthood. The Great Bustard Group, a UK-registered charity that seeks to develop a self-sustaining population of great bustards in the UK, undertook a project in 2004 to monitor the reintroduction to Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire using eggs acquired from Saratov in Russia. In England in 2009 and 2010, the restored birds produced eggs and reared chicks. Despite originally being endemic to Britain, great bustards are now regarded as foreign species by English law. Number 11. Lesser Rhea The Lesser Rhea, also called Darwin's Rhea, has a height of around 3 feet and a weight range of about 33 to 55 pounds. It's sometimes called the South American ostrich because it resembles a miniature ostrich. Of all the ratitas, the ray's wings are the biggest in relation to its body. The ray is a skilled runner who balances while spreading its wings like sails. Rays, unlike other birds, have three toes, and each wingtip has a talon for defense. They have smooth, velvety brown feathers with white flecks throughout their dark plumage. Juveniles completely lack the white specks, developing them only at the age of three to four years old. Females are duller than males and have fewer white speckles. Only the wide scrublands of Patagonia and the South American Antipolano harbor Darwin's Rhea. They live all throughout the Andean Plateau, including the steppes and the Puna grassland. Despite living in dry areas, they frequently spawn close to sources of water like lakes, marshes, and rivers. Lesser rays consume fruits, seeds, roots, and broad-leaved plants as well. They also eat lizards, small rodents, and insects. The plants that rays consume provide the majority of their water source. They're never far from food since the grasslands where they travel are abound with vegetation all year long. Prized for its soft feathers, huge eggs, and meat, Darwin's rhea is often poached. Its body parts are employed in traditional medicine, and its skin is woven into carpets. The widespread conversion of grasslands to farmland and pasture for cattle grazing has resulted in the fragmentation of the rays' habitat. Number 10. The Mute Swan 
The mute swan, a species of swan and waterfowl, belongs to the Antidae family. It's native to a large portion of Europe and the far north of Africa. With lesser imports in Australasia and southern Africa, it's an imported species with the highest numbers outside of its native area in Northern America. Because it's less chatty than other swan species, it gets the nickname mute. This huge swan, whose length ranges from 125 to 170 centimeters, has all white plumage and an orange beak with a black border. Johann Frederick Gomelin, a German scientist, first formally described the mute swan in 1789 under the name Anna Salor. In 1803, Johann Matthias Bechstein moved the bird to a new genus, Cygnus. The Latin word Cygnus and Olor both mean swan. Number 9. Emu after its ratite relative the ostrich, the emu is the tallest extant bird. It's the sole surviving member of the genus Dromaeus, and the biggest native bird of Australia, where it's endemic. The majority of mainland Australia is included in the emu's range, but once European settlers arrived in Australia in 1788, the Tasmanian, Kangaroo Island, and King Island subspecies went extinct. Emus are brown, flightless birds with long necks and legs that may grow as tall as 1.9 meters. Emus can run at 48 kilometers per hour when necessary, and they're capable of covering enormous distances while foraging on a variety of plants and insects. However, they've also been known to go for weeks without eating. They don't usually drink, but when they do, they consume a lot of water. The bird is sufficiently widespread to be listed by the International Union for Conservation of Nature as a species of least concern. Despite this, certain local populations are classified as endangered. And by the 1800s, subspecies like the Tasmanian emu had vanished entirely. Road kills, predation on their eggs, and habitat fragmentation are dangerous to their existence. The bird has a significant role in Australian Aboriginal mythology. Indigenous Australians and early European settlers exploited emus as a food source. Emus are curious animals that have been observed approaching people when they notice sudden movement of a limb or an item of clothing. Number 8. The Cassowary this huge, flightless blackbird, the southern cassowary, also known as a double-wadded cassowary, the Australian cassowary, or the two-wadded cassowary. Along with the dwarf and northern cassowaries, it's one of three species of cassowary still in existence. As a rat type, it's related to kiwis, emus, ostriches, and rays. The kiwi and cassowary families are closely linked. They split off from one another around 40 million years ago. Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and northeastern Australia all include populations of the southern cassowary. Although it occasionally uses neighboring savanna woods or mangrove, it primarily lives in tropical rainforests. In Australia, below 1,100 meters and in New Guinea below 500 meters, the species tends to be found. Southern cassowaries are known for being violent and dangerous to both people and other animals. The bird can kick with their claws that look like razor blades and jump quite high. Deadly encounters with southern cassowaries are uncommon though. Since 1990, just two human fatalities have been documented. Number 7. Wandering Albatross Diomedea exulans, often known as the wandering albatross, snowy albatross, white-winged albatross, or goonie, is a huge seabird belonging to the Diomedeidae family, with a circumpolar distribution in the southern ocean. It was the last albatross species to be identified, and it was long mistaken for the Tristian albatross, or the Antipodine albatross. Some writers continue to view them as distinct subspecies of the same species. Both BirdLife International and the SACC have divided this species, and a proposal to do so is now on the table. It's a part of the species complex known as the Wandering Albatross, together with the Amsterdam Albatross. Being comparable in size to the Southern Royal Albatross, the Wandering Albatross is one of the two biggest members of the genus Diomedea, aka the Great Albatrosses. It's one of the world's biggest, most well-known, and most extensively researched bird species. It's one of the most migratory species, and it has the largest known wingspan of any living bird. Wandering albatrosses have also been observed to travel more than 120,000 kilometers around the Southern Ocean three times in a single year. Sailors used to catch the birds for their long-winged bones, which were used to make the stems for tobacco pipes. Readers of Coolridge's The Rime of the Ancient Mariner will be aware with the unfortunate destiny of the man who shot the bird of good omen with his crossbow. The early explorers of the Great Southern Ocean comforted themselves with the albatrosses' company and their lonely isolation.
Number 6. Ostrich The infraclass Paleognathy, a complex group of flightless birds, commonly known as ratites, and include emus, rays, kiwis, contains big flightless birds of the genus Struthio, and in the order Struthioniforms. The common ostrich and the Somali ostrich are the only two species of ostrich that exist today. They're indigenous to Africa and are the only living land animals that lay the biggest eggs. They can run at a speed of 70 kilometers per hour, making them the quickest birds on land. They're raised all over the world, especially for their feathers, which are used as dusters and ornaments. <coughs> Additionally, their skin is utilized to make leather goods. The fact that ostriches are also the heaviest living birds is noteworthy. Ostriches are now exclusively found in the wild in Africa, where they may be found in a variety of open, semi-arid environments, such as savannas and the Sahel, both north and south of the equatorial forest zone. The Somali ostrich lives in the Horn of Africa and develops separately from the common ostrich because of the East African Rift, a geographical barrier. The Maasai subspecies of the common ostrich coexist with the Somali ostrich in some locations, but behavioral and ecological differences prevent them from mating. By the middle of the 20th century, hunting had driven Arabian ostriches out of Asia Minor and Arabia, and efforts to transfer North African ostriches to Israel to fill the ecological niche have been unsuccessful. In Australia, escaped common ostriches have created wild colonies. Number 5. Himalayan Vulture The Himalayan griffin vulture is an old-world vulture that's indigenous to the Himalayas and the nearby Tibetan Plateau. It's one of the two biggest true raptors from the old world. On the IUCN Red List, it's categorized as near-threatened. It shouldn't be confused with the closely related griffin vulture. The Himalayan vulture's legs are coated in buffy feathers that range in color from greenish gray to pale brown and have dark brown larger cover feathers, tail, and wing quills, but a pale buff uniform upper side and paler tipped inner secondaries. The underside and the under wing covers are light brown or buff, and in some individuals they're virtually white. Adults who have long, pale brown ruff with white streaks and sharp, spiky rough feathers have whitish down on their heads that becomes yellowish when they develop. Adults also have a yellowish crown. The Himalayan vultures rest on crags, its preferred perches bearing white stains from frequent urination. They often don't go below 1,215 meters in elevation. They can only fly briefly when flapping their wings. They prefer soaring on thermals. When approaching a carcass, this vulture produces a rattling sound, and it may grunt or hiss when resting or eating carrion. While eating, individuals may laugh to ward off competition from other vultures or even to chastise them. Due to their sociable nature, they're frequently observed in big groups, sometimes even with crows. Number 4. Trumpeter Swan a kind of swan found in North America is the trumpeter swan. With a wingspan of 185 to 250 centimeters, it's the biggest existing species of duck and the heaviest living bird native to North America. By 2010, the natural population in North America had been progressively increased to around 46,000 birds through careful reintroductions by conservation organizations and the Trumpeter Swan Society. The trumpeter swan was extensively hunted in the 19th and early 20th centuries for game or meat, for the soft swan skins used in powder puffs, and for their quills and feathers. This species is also exceptionally susceptible to lead poisoning brought on by young birds consuming used lead shot from fishing weights. Between 1853 and 1877, the Hudson Bay Company slaughtered a total of 17,671 swans, capturing thousands of them per year. Early in the 20th century, breeding trumpeter swans were all but extinct in the United States, with just over 70 wild trumpeters remaining in isolated hot springs within or close to Yellowstone National Park. Several thousand trumpeters were found during an airborne survey of Alaska's Copper River in the 1950s, which was unexpected and excellent news. Number 3. Leptoptilos the adjutant bird is another name for the genus of extraordinarily big tropical storks known as Leptoptilus. The name is a diminutive of the Lepto feather. The marabou stork may be found in the sub-Saharan Africa, and two species are resident breeders in southern Asia. These are enormous birds, often measuring 110 to 150 centimeters in height and 210 to 250 centimeters wide. Each of these three species has a white belly and undertail with black wings and upper bodies. The 
The neck and head are bald like vultures. The enormous bill is thick and lengthy. Chicks are a duller, darker variation of adults. In wetlands, Leptopatillus storks are sociable colonial breeders who construct large stick nests in trees. They consume rodents, baby birds, lizards, insects, frogs, and oh yeah, insects. Their bare head and neck, like those of the vultures they frequently dine with, are adaptations to their frequent scavenging habits. When a scavenger's bird's head was inside a huge carcass, the feathered head would quickly become clogged with blood and other things, and a bear head is simpler to keep clean. The three Leptopatilla storks retract their necks in flight like a heron, unlike other storks that fly with their necks extended. Number 2. Golden Eagle the Northern Hemisphere is home to the Golden Eagle, or Aquila crescitos. It's the eagle species that's the most extensively dispersed. It's a member of the Occipitridae family, like other eagles. They rank among the most well-known raptors in the Northern Hemisphere. These birds have golden brown feathers on their napes and dark brown bodies. This species' immature eagles frequently exhibit white markings on their wings as well as a white tail. Golden eagles hunt a variety of prey, mostly hares, rabbits, marmots, and other ground squirrels, using their agility, speed, strong feet, and enormous pointed talons. The home ranges or territories of golden eagles can reach 200 kilometers. They create substantial nests on cliffs and other perches, and they may stay there for multiple breeding seasons. The majority of breeding occurs in the spring. They're monogamous and stay together for a number of years or perhaps the rest of their lives. The six-week incubation period begins when a female lays up to four eggs. In around three months, one or two of the young usually make it to fledgling. These young golden eagles often become fully independent in the fall following which they rove far and wide for four to five years before claiming a territory as their own. Number 1. Harpy Eagle A species of eagle native to the Neotropics is this monster, known as the Harpy Eagle. To distinguish it from the Poapuan Eagle, also known as the New Guinea Harpy Eagle or the Poapuan Harpy Eagle, it's often referred to as the American Harpy Eagle. It's one of the largest living species of eagles in the world and the biggest and most powerful raptor in its habitat. It generally lives in the higher canopy layer of tropical lowland rainforests. It's now extinct in many of the areas of its previous range due to habitat destruction, and it's almost completely distinct in all of Central America. Along with the Philippine eagle, it's occasionally listed as the biggest eagle. The harpy eagle inhabits Mexico, Central America, South America, and as far south as Argentina. It's rare across its entire range. They reside in the emergent layer of rainforests. The eagle is most prevalent in Brazil, where the entire country is home to the bird. The national bird of Panama is the harpy eagle, which is also shown on the country's coat of arms. In light of the 2009 United Nations Climate Change Conference, Hope, the 15th harpy eagle released in Belize, was given the title Ambassador for Climate Change. Which of these awesome birds have you seen in real life? Are there any other big birds who should have been on our list? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.